Hey, what's up, peoples? Hardleg Joe here with my deck profile for Praise the Sun, a go first plant combo build centered around the Sun Avalon Link monsters and its many Sun themed support cards. Going over our deck list, we've got three of the Sacred Sun Seed, one big plant mommy, three confused dangles, a high schooler, a middle schooler, a giant living carrot wrestler, a grade schooler, three clowns, three birdmen, three of the bravest darn rabbits this side of the Rocky Mountains, three rose girl, three of the pod people plants, Yanni, a floof ball, and three of Shadow the Hedge Seed. For our spell traps, we have three of the seed teleportation matrix, one, one, four, one, a three lost puppers, Rika Rhoda, a shrine for praising the sun, a plant recycling plant, and the wind condition. Our extra deck contains two of Ass Thrasher, the game ender, two Daphne, two Disney princesses, and one each of Sweet Jam, that thing from the end of Princess Mononoke, I think, a college student, a kindergartner, big tree, biggest tree, a bird, a nurse, and little tree. The side deck I will go over later if we have time, though we might not, because this deck is complicated as heck. If you are new to Yu-Gi-Oh, I would not recommend it. Your game plan is basically to go first and do a very long combo using every plant engine in the game to end on a board of at least three disruptions, usually more. To start with, let's go over those disruptions so you have an idea of this deck's power level. Starting with Sun Avalon Big Tree. This cannot be destroyed or attacked, though it doesn't prevent your opponent from attacking you directly. Uh, during your turn, you can tribute a link monster that this points to in order to destroy cards your opponent controls equal to the link rating. Most importantly though, when this is summoned, it searches Sun Avalon Bloom. This is a continuous trap that when activated, negates all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls. This can be chained in response to an on-field effect in, in order to negate it, or activate it on existing boards in order to just blanket negate everything. It also has a second effect, but we'll get to that later. As for other boss monsters, we have another Link 4 plant, a Bagel Lancer, which can bounce monsters back to the hand as a quick effect, though you take damage equal to that monster's attack when you do. A Teardrop is a rank 8 Ixie that lets you detach to target an opponent's monster and tribute it as a quick effect. Hypertron is interesting. During your turn, if you activate a spell, trap, or monster effect, you can target the same type of card in your graveyard and then attach it as material. Then, during your opponent's turn, this can negate that type of card by detaching it. So, like, if you activate a spell effect on your turn, this attaches a different spell from your graveyard, and now you can negate spells by detaching a spell. Same with monsters, same with traps. Uh, finally, we have Marjoram, a synchro that protects all your plants from being targeted while your life points are higher than your opponent's. Also, once per turn, if you gain life points, you can destroy a card on the field. This is neat because when this is summoned, you search Blessed Winds, a continuous trap that lets you shuffle a plant monster from the graveyard into the deck in order to gain life points which will trigger her effect during your opponent's turn, making it into a powerful disruption tool. These five are what we're trying to make on the first turn. If you have an awesome hand, you can make all five of them and be pretty much unbeatable. And if things go wrong, you may just be able to make one or none at all. The aim of this particular build is to make at least three of them as consistently as possible, by using a very specific combo. This combo requires three cards. First, you need your Sunseed. This is just a normal monster, but your little tree needs to be made with this in order to have any effect. And this starts all your combos. Even if you don't get the other two cards you need for full combo, getting the Sunseed should at least allow you to make something. Because of this, we are playing 10 other cards that help you search the seed. Rescue Rabbit can summon two of them from the deck. 
Unexpected die summons one of them from the deck, so does one for one, and in a pinch, Lone Fire Blossom contribute itself to become the seed. Fortunately, we have a ton of level 1 monsters and a ton of plant monsters as well, so these two can actually be used for other stuff if you already have the seed in hand. Anyway, the next thing we need is a plant extender. Basically, any plant that we can special summon from our hand early in the combo. The best card for this is Sunseed Shadow. If you control the Sunseed, you can summon this from your hand. This is easily searched with Where Art Thou, which is why we play that at 3 as well. The only other option for this slot is Rose Girl, who will summon herself from the hand if a plant monster is sent from the field to the graveyard. So as soon as you link away your seed for the big tree, you can summon this out and it does everything you need. These two are our main extenders. You can also use Laurel for this or the Little Rika if you happen to draw them, but you don't want to if you can help it. Because these are both key combo pieces, and using them early means changing everything else you do to compensate, which usually results in less boss monsters. Anyway, the last piece of this combo is a level 4 monster that summons itself from the graveyard by burning you. Which is oddly specific, but we actually have two famous cards in this game that do exactly that. For 4 Mage Trick Clown and Zephros the Elite. This slot can also be filled by Parallel Exceed, who doesn't do what those two do, but it allows you to end on the same exact board by doing the combo just slightly differently, so it counts. But yeah, those are the three categories, which you could see a bit better if I sort the cards differently. There we go. Looking at the deck list like this, you can easily see how most of our cards are just one of the three parts of the combo. We have 13 cards that get us to Sunseed, including the Sunseed itself. We have 9 cards that are either extenders or help us search our extenders. And 9 cards that act as that level 4 monster we need. The remaining 12 cards are all mandatory pieces of our combo. Except for Spore. Now fortunately, only 2 of these are what I would consider to be Garnets. Mardell and World Carrotweight Champion. You really don't want to draw these because they will screw up your combo and brick your hand. Everything else in here is fine to draw, and in fact, if you open with Laurel or any of the Rika monsters, that just means you don't have to search them, which frees you up to search Spore instead. Spore is essentially the fourth combo piece. It's not required for the deck to work, you can cut it if you want, but getting Spore on top of your normal combo is what allows you to make the biggest, most powerful boards. I would play it at 3, except it would ruin our ratios and tank what little consistency we have. I thought it was better to focus on the 3 card combo than try to make this a consistent 4 card combo, especially since there's far less ways to search Spore. But yeah, that should be enough background Let's hop into the replay and show you what we're actually doing. Okay, so for the sake of simplicity, we're going to open with just three cards, and the most simple ones at that. Sunseed, Shadow, and Trick Clown. First, you normal summon your Sunseed, and then, while you control it, special summon Shadow as well. It is very important that you summon your Extender in the middle zone, for reasons I'll go over later. But yeah. Now you want to link away your Sunseed for the Little Sun Avalon tree. When it's summoned in the extra monster zone, using the Sunseed, it'll search Sunvine Shrine, which is critical to everything. You can only activate this spell while you control a Sun Avalon, and you must discard when you do so. This is where you pitch Trick Clown or Zephyros if you have it. When Trick Clown hits the graveyard, it'll summon itself back and inflict a thousand damage to you, which triggers your little tree. Its effect says once per turn, when you take damage, you can gain those life points back and then summon a Sunvine monster out of your extra deck for free. In this case, you go for our single copy of Healer. She targets a Sun Avalon on summon and heals you for 300 life points times its link rating which in this case is just 300 life points, which is actually very important. For now though, you're just going to take your two Link monsters, 
and use them as material for Aroma Seraphy Jasmine. This is why you needed your extender in the middle zone. Jasmine can tribute a monster she points to and summon any other plant from the deck. So you tribute the shadow and summon Mardell. When she is summoned, she will search any plant, allowing you to get your one of copy of Laurel. Laurel can special summon itself from your hand if your life points are higher than your opponent's. So it's a good thing we gained that 300 earlier. Now you link away Mardell and Laurel for another copy of Jasmine, because when Laurel hits the graveyard, you'll gain 500 life points. And Jasmine has a second effect that says if you gain life points, you can search a plant monster. This is not a hard once per turn, which means you'll get two searches here. You'll want to go for our two high level Rika monsters, Snowdrop and Mudan. Before we get to them though, you can link away both of your Jasmines and make the Big Tree, who searches your first disruption, the Big Negate Trap. Now that you have a Sun Avalon back on the field, it's time to finally use Shrine. Once per turn, it can summon Seed back out of the graveyard. That's, that's what it does. Once it's back, we immediately use Mudan, who can tribute a plant, to summon herself from the hand and then search a Rika spell trap. We only play one, which is the spell Rika Glamour, which can tribute a plant to search any Rika and a plant monster of the same level. We use this by tributing Mudan, allowing us to not only search our level 4 Rika, but also World Carrot Weight Champion. The Rika we just searched can summon herself from the hand whenever a monster is tributed. And since she was in the hand when your spell resolved, you can summon her for free right now. This finally gives us two level 4s, which you can overlay to make Rika Queen Strena. She can detach to add a plant from the graveyard back to the hand, which is really useful if you have any other extenders in the hand, or if you used Zephros instead of Trick Clown. But for this version of the combo, we're just going to send our little tree back to the extra deck in case we have to rebuild. From here, we can use our other Rika in hand, who can tribute a plant monster to summon herself and another plant from the hand. Now, when the rank 4 is tributed, she summons a high-level plant Ixie from the extra deck, and then attaches herself as material. This is what allows us to make Sacred Tree Beast. Now that it's here, we can use our Rika on the field to target a plant and make all other plant monsters the same level. We make both our plants level 8, which triggers the beast, allowing us to attach a monster from our graveyard. Next, we overlay our two level 8s to make Teardrop the Rika Queen, and then set our trap to finally complete our end board. From just three monsters, we've got three disruptions, two monster negates, and quick effect monster removal. You may be worried about that zero attack tree we left out there, but remember, it can't be attacked, nor can it be destroyed, which makes it pretty difficult to deal with. This is important because of our follow-up plays. Once you stun your opponent with these three, it's really not that difficult to close out games in turn two, assuming you still have your spell traps. Shrine, remember, can summon the Sun Seed back once per turn. And in addition to making trees, it can also be used to summon Sun Vine Thrasher. When this thing is summoned, it targets a Sun Avalon Link Monster and gains 800 attack times its link rating. Not only does this give it 4,000 attack with your big tree, but it has a second effect that any monster it destroys by battle can be summoned to your side of the field to a zone that a link monster points to. This is key because of our continuous trap's second effect. In addition to negating all monsters your opponent controls, it says when a plant link monster attacks, it can gain the attack of all monsters it points to. Which means our zero attack tree is about to get very, very big very quickly. Even if your opponent manages to clear off your other two monsters, the 4,000 attack vine, plus whatever monster it steals, plus the tree getting very big off of both their attacks, is usually enough to get game just by itself. And again, this is just the base combo with three cards. You can extend further depending on what you get. 
Zephros, for example, while filling almost the same role as Trick Clown, will bounce your Sunvine Shrine back to your hand in order to summon itself. Because this spell isn't a hard once per turn, this means you can activate it again to summon an additional Sun Seed out of the graveyard this turn. If you start with Unexpected Die, you can use this to get your Sun Seed and do that whole combo I just mentioned without even using your normal summon, allowing you to summon an additional monster. And Rescue Rabbit will summon two seeds from the deck, giving you an additional monster. This is important because if during the course of your combo you can get two additional monsters on the field, then you can make an additional boss monster using Shadow's Graveyard effect. It says you can target a Link 2 plant on the field and then summon an additional copy of it from the extra deck with its effects negated. This is why we play two Daphne. This thing's effect is unimportant. All that matters is that it's a Link 2 plant with sideways arrows. Which means if you get two extra plants on the board, you can make this, summon an extra copy with Shadow, and then link both of them away for Bagel Tree Man. As for how you get to Marjoram, both Spore and Rose Girl are tuners. And Rose Girl in particular is a level 3, which is important if you get her on the field with Snowdrop. Remember that she can target any plant and make all plants that level. Usually you use this on herself to make everything level 8, but you could just as easily use it on Rose Girl, make them both level 3, and that gives you the 6 stars you need to make Marge. You can also just use Rose Girl with Lone Fire if you happen to get them both on the field. Or Spore with just about anything. There's a ton of different ways you can synchro using Spore's level modulation effect. It summons itself out of the graveyard. I don't really have time to get into all of them now. Uh, nor do I really have time to get into the side deck at the moment. So I'm just going to point out three things really quickly. Uh, Sunvine Maiden, a decent side card. It's a level 1 plant hand trap that negates anything that would target your extra deck plant monsters. This makes her a searchable way to deal with imperm and veilers that might disrupt your combos. Um, I've heard this Link 3 gives the deck even more combo potential and even higher ceiling. But I feel like things are complicated enough as it is without adding in even more Link monsters. And then there's this Tremendous Fire, which seems really silly, but it's one of the only cards in the game which will inflict burn damage to you, while also inflicting more damage to your opponent so that your life points are still higher. This means it can potentially replace Trick Clown and Zephyros in your combo without ruining your stuff with Laurel. It can also be used to replace Parallel Exceed, which... I suppose I should mention real quick how that works. If you summon a Link Monster, you can summon it from your hand as a level 4, and then summon another copy of itself from the deck, also as a level 4. If you open with this, you can summon it as soon as you make your little tree, and then start your combo by making the rank 4 Rika Ixi, which is what Zephyros and Trip Clown are normally there to do. Of course, because you don't take any burn damage, you now have to summon Healer properly by using your Sunvine Shrine to bring back Seed right at the beginning. This tiny loss and advantage is made up for by the fact that you no longer have to search Mudan or do the Rika combo because you've already got level 4s on the field, which frees you up to search other extenders with Jasmine. Overall, the deck is just full of really interesting pivot points here. It has just enough flexibility to make things really interesting to play, especially if you, your opponent happens to have just like one disruption. Enough to make it interesting, but not enough to stop you completely. It's just a matter of learning all the ins and outs of every plant monster in the deck. I wish I had time to go over it all, but this video is already way too long, and I have a schedule to keep. So for now, I'll just let you watch this combo play out while I remind you to like the video if you liked it, subscribe for more chill Yu-Gi-Oh! content in general, and if you have any questions or feedback, leave it down in the comments. I do actually read that stuff. Anyway, until next time, good luck and have fun.